Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, you are going to learn about the substitution method of solving system of equations. Okay. Now, before we get going with the substitution method, I want to kind of give a review of what systems of equations are. Now, it's when two or more equations are working together in some way. And so, for instance, here is a good example of a system of equations. Two linear equations, and uh, what they represent graphically are two lines. And the point where they intersect, that dot right there, this is the most important point in systems of equations. This is what we're trying to find. This point of intersection is called the solution, and that solution is an xy coordinate pair. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that not all equations are that easy to graph. And so if we could graph all the equations, that'd be great. Find the, and just look to see where they intersected. But not all of them are easy to graph. So we have to have another method. And so there's some mathematical methods. So the method that we're going to learn today is the substitution method. So. Here's an example. We have y equals 3x minus 2 and 5x plus 4y equals 26. That second one would not be fun to graph. Um, and so here is the process. We want to find the x and the y coordinate pair. Now, if you look at y equals 3x minus 2, if that y equals 3x minus 2, then at the point of solution, that y also equals 3x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 3x minus 2 in the place of y. And I'm going to rewrite that bottom equation. So look what I did. 5x plus 4, and instead of y, I put 3x minus 2 in parentheses, equals 26. Now what I have to do is solve for x. I'm going to distribute that 4, simplify, I'm going to add like terms. Now I've got a two-step equation. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. 17x equals 34, divide by 17, and x equals 2. And so, if you look at the solution, we found our x, 2. But we have to find the y as well. So here is how we're going to do it. We can, I want you to pick one of those equations. Now I'm going to give you a helpful hint. Always pick the one in slope-intercept form. That's the hint of the day. So y equals 3x minus 2, that's the one I'm going to use. Now I'm going to substitute our new x, 2, in for the x in this equation. Okay, and now I'm going to simplify and solve for y. 6 minus 2, y equals 4. I just found the y in our point, and there is our solution, 2, 4. That's the point where these two lines intersect. Now let's take a look at another one to give you a little bit more practice. This one is kind of similar to the other one, except the y equals mx plus b is at the bottom. So we're going to take this 3x minus 11, and we're going to substitute it in for y. So I'll rewrite the top equation, 4x plus 5, and then instead of y, I'll put 3x minus 11 equals 2. And so you notice that I replace the y with that again. I'm going to distribute that 5, giving us this equation. I'm going to add like terms. And then I'm going to do my two-step equation, giving us 19x equals 57, divided by 19, and x equals 3. So again, look at the solution, and I found the, the x, which is 3. Now I'm going to pick one of these equations, and which one should I pick? The bottom one, because it's in slope-intercept form. Always the easier one. So we're going to substitute 3 in for our x. And now we're going to simplify. y equals 9 minus 11, which is negative 2. There's our y, and our final solution. 3, negative 2. Now here's a different kind of substitution that comes up uh, pretty often as well. 
This is where both of the equations are in slope-intercept form, but they're very hard to graph. It would be a very difficult and not a fun time trying to graph these things. And so, if both of these um, expressions are equal to y, then we can actually set them equal to each other. And that is the trick to this. We set 7x minus 20 equal to 12x minus 45. And we're going to solve for x. So uh, there's a few ways to do this. I always try to take care of the, uh, get the x's on the left. And so I'm going to take care of the constant of 20, add 20 on both sides, leaving me 7x equals 12x minus 25. I want my x's on the left-hand side. That's just my personal thing. I cross those out. I get negative 5x equals negative 25. Divide by negative 5, and x equals positive 5. And so if I had to pick one of these, I could pick either one because they're both in slope-intercept. I'm just going to pick the first one because there's lower numbers. And so I will substitute the 5 in for x. Simplify, 35 minus 20 is 15, and there it is, the solution, 5, 15, the point where these two lines intersect. Okay, now I'm going to share with you some variations of the substitution problems that my students have a tough time with. And so here's the first one. Now, looking at this, we have the first one is in standard form, and the bottom one is in slope-intercept form, or is it? is it? Now, y equals 6, for some reason, this y equals 6 baffles the students. It's actually easier than any of the other problems we've had. Why? Because it tells us what the y is. y equals 6. And so we just put the 6 in for the solution for y. We're halfway done. We don't have to do all of that work on the left-hand side. All we have to do is take this equation, 4x plus 5y equals 2. Substitute the 6 in for the y this time, because the 6 is y. Simplify. I'm just guessing that you know how to do this, and so I'm just kind of speeding up here. Divide by 4, and x equals negative 7. And so this is the point where these two lines intersect. y equals 6 is definitely an equation, it's in slope-intercept form, it just has zero x's, meaning it's a uh, horizontal line that goes across the graph at the 6 on the y. Now this one is very similar to the last one, except this equation is not just a y equals 6 like the last one. This one actually has an x, y equals 2x. For some reason this gets my students as well. For some reason, if they don't have the number adding on to the x's, that y-intercept, like y equals 2x plus 8, it just blocks them. And so, just so you know, y equals 2x is really y equals 2x plus 0. The 0 is the y-intercept. It's going through the 0, but we would never put plus 0 on anything. So, you just have to understand that y equals 2x is just the same as that. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to take 2x, substitute it in for y, and then we're going to continue on with our problem. Um, we worked out a few examples, and I know you know how to do it from here. And now this last one. I know some teachers are going to say to me, this does not look like a substitution problem. This looks like something else in the next video, right? Well, I totally agree with you. This is not something that I would tell my students to use the substitution method, but there are times electronically on tests where they are required to use the substitution method for this. And so uh, none of, neither of these equations are set up to um, substitute right now. So what we need to do is we need to take one of these equations. I'm going to take the top one, and I'm going to get it ready to substitute. So I'm going to go off to the side, and I'm going to solve for y. I subtract 3x on both sides, giving me y equals negative 3x plus 12. Now that I have y equals, I can now put that back into the system. And if you noticed, I put in the 
negative 3x plus 12 instead of that original one. And so now we can substitute that in for the y and continue with our substitution method. Okay. Well, I hope that helped. That was a lot. And I always encourage, always encourage you to rewatch the video and pause it if you need to grasp the concept. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.